Our Father, we thank you for this time. We bless your name today. We ask you, oh Lord, that today you enrich the life of everyone with this dynamic face in Jesus' name. Amen. The faith to live and the faith to walk in the center of the will of God. We are asking that you give to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, this year will be a new year. A mighty year. A prosperous year for every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. That Lord, you move every mountain. You remove every hurdle in our way. And all the challenges we have, we've been carrying from all the past years, Lord. We pray that this year, you take all those things away in Jesus' name. No sick person here. No weak person here. No falling person here. No coward here. The might and the power of the Lord, you give to everyone in Jesus' name. Like the worthies of all the prophets and the patriarchs and the people of all. Lord, we pray you give us the faith to walk in a straightforward manner. In the narrow way and victoriously in what you have committed into our hands in Jesus' name. Bless us in your word today. We give the glory to you and we pray that this church and our leadership in particular who are here. We are praying you edify everyone. And prepare us for conquering victory, victorious things ahead of us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless every one of you. Say I am blessed. You can see down. God bless you. Romans chapter 4. I'm starting from verse 12. Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 12. We're talking about walking. In the steps of Abraham's faith. Abraham was a patriarch. A friend of God. What mighty things took place in his life. And what benefits are we still receiving today. As a result of the great faith of Abraham. That's what we are talking about. And I pray that this same faith. The Lord will pass into your heart in Jesus name. In Romans chapter 4 I read from verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Here Paul the apostle by the inspiration of God, he wanted to remind the Gentiles, the people, he wanted to remind all the people that have come to know the Lord by faith. And then he said, you know what you have? Every blessing that Abraham had, you can have because we're walking in the same steps of faith of Abraham, which he had even when he was still uncircumcised. And how did he manifest that faith? How did he demonstrate that faith? How did he show that this is the kind of faith the Lord is looking for? And that faithful Abraham faith full abraham and faith filled abraham became a model a pattern an example for you and for me that in all the things we face in this new year for the rest of our lives we'll be able to walk and move and live according to that faith look at verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace is telling us that all the provision of God and all the things he expects you to do all is by faith and all is by grace to the end that is for the purpose the promise might be sure to all the seed all the seed that includes you I said that includes you the promise will be sure for your life in Jesus name not only to that which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all soul, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. When as yet he had no child, I have made you a father of many nations. When as yet you don't have any congregation, I have made you a pastor of a multitude. I want as yet you are not even married i've made you a father a mother of many children and when you don't even have any job yet and the lord says i've made you the director of a big company yeah. uh, you know god is talking to our faith he never speaks to a reason because when god speaks he cannot speak to your reason because he reasons at a higher level my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord as the heavens are far 
higher, greater than the earth. Even so are my thoughts and my ways greater and far and higher than your thoughts and your ways. If God were to speak to your thoughts, it would blow you up. He only speaks to your faith. If God were to speak to your reasoning, it will blow you up because he cannot speak to your reason. He reasons at a higher level. It's like a professor in a, in a university. He's talking to a child that just came to school this morning and a little child, about four years of age. And the professor, the professor cannot talk to the same level of reasoning because the child will not understand the same thing the almighty God, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He cannot speak to your reason. The only thing he can speak to in your life is your faith. And if you don't have the faith to receive from God, you'll never receive because everything God says to you when you put it and you process it in your reasoning it becomes unreasonable how is it going to be reasonable for you when it doesn't speak at the level of your reasoning it speaks only to your faith and when god said to abraham it is of faith and i've made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickness the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were calling those things so it be not as though they were for us that looks unreasonable well when you are when you only accept it by reasoning but when you accept it by faith the thing is not there yet and god said it's there it's like Isaiah saying behold the child is born and i'm looking around i'm saying where is the child he says i'm not talking to your reasoning knocking to i'm not talking to your head i'm talking to your heart and behold the son is given i'm asking what is the son what is the son and he says i'm not talking to your reasoning i'm talking to your faith and then he says and the government shall be upon his shoulder and i'm saying what is he where is he and i can't find him he says you can't find him with your reasoning you'll find him with your faith that, that's what the Lord is telling us today. He'll tell you things, he'll show you things, he'll reveal things to you that if you're looking for it, where is it? Where is it? I'm looking for it. And I'm saying, how are you looking for it? I'm looking for it with my natural eyes. You can't see this one. I pray that God will open your eyes of understanding. Because that is what we'll see. Your physical eyes will not see. And your reasonings will not see. That's why it says, He call it doses would be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in what? It was weak in the flesh. It was weak in natural things. It was getting older. The older you get, the more the more you lose your physical strength. You have been running fast and walking fast. Before the older you get, you walk slower because you're weak in the flesh. But there is something that goes stronger and stronger. That as you are growing older and then you see all the faithfulness of god in the past and you see what is done for other people they will become stronger in faith the older you grow the stronger you are going to be in faith and the things that used to bother you and the things that used to kind of uh, divide you and distract you and destroy you all those things they're no more there in jesus name you know you are getting older now you came to the lord you made 20 years ago 30 years ago you are not 30 years old in the lord and you are hearing the bible every day and hearing the bible every sunday and hearing the bible every morning and hearing the bible every time you're by yourself how many retreats have you gone through how many faith clinics have you gone through now you are getting older in the lord you are getting stronger in faith and that is what happened to abraham if you look at abraham you'll see that was getting stronger and stronger look at him in chapter 12 yes he had the level of faith he came out but you know he was afraid and he said sarah you know what when we go to this place they call the place egypt and the king of egypt is going to see that you are beautiful and he can kill me because of you that was just a level and then he came now to chapter 13 he grew in chapter 13 because he was moving on a step at a time a day at a time a week at a time and when lord said i'm going to grab this and take this he said no we're not going to fight we must not fight because we are brethren take this i will take the rest and take or take that i will take the rest you know it was different now and then you come to chapter 14 after you know lord had gone and then all those people confederacy of kings they came and they took him they took lord and his wife and all his children they took everybody away and somebody told 
Abraham. Now his faith was already going. He said, whoever they are, whatever their might and whatever their power, I'm talking about confederacy of kings, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And then they have all these long names, difficult to pronounce. And they have all these long arrows and spears. And Abraham said, I'll get them. And Abraham went out with just his servants that he trained himself. 314 and then he came out there and then he got all of them and then he defeated them his faith was i'm saying that the older you get as you're going from chapter to chapter in your life and day to day in your life and week to week in your life your faith is increasing already in chapter 15 the lord said abraham that's the place where he says and he believed god and his faith was counted unto him for righteousness and the lord said abraham he said yes here am i look at the stars and what do you see if you can count them so will you be able to count your children he was growing and growing and growing. come to chapter 22 now and the lord said now abraham he said here am i lord that's your son your only son go and sacrifice him to me on a mountain i will show you the face of this man was at this level very high and he accounted that god is able to raise this child from the dead and anyway he got there and he said you servants stay here i and this lad will go up yonder and we both of us were coming back to what level of faith that was the height of faith being not weak in faith don't worry about what you want in the past. You are different today. Yeah. Your faith today will take any challenge. And your faith today will move any mountain. In Jesus name. Yeah. What he did do now when he was not working faith. Be not working faith. In verse 19 we are told. He considered not his own body. He said there are things I don't look at. There are things I don't focus on. There are things I don't even think about. There are things I do not even consider. When you come to this level of faith of Abraham, the things you hear, I consider not. The things I feel, I consider not. The things, you know, people, the slander of people, they, they put this down, they put this one up, and they model things up, and they change this, and they say one plus one is equal to five. You know, all those things you hear from people, you just say, I don't consider them anymore because I now walk by faith. I said you are walking by faith. You're not walking by feeling. You're not walking by emotion. You're not walking by what people say, what people do, how people act, and how people live. You're not walking about, you know, what news you are hearing from them. Worry some news or whatever, and all, all the willful negligence. You're not worried about that anymore because you are now at another level of faith. Say, I'm at a higher level. Higher, higher you will go. I said, higher, higher you will go when you are able to shut your eyes to what you see you're going higher when you're able to block your ears to what you hear you're going higher and when you're able to concentrate only on the word and you're moved only by what you believe you're not moved by what they say you're not moved by what you feel you're not moved by what you think you're not moved by your reasoning you're only moved by what you believe and you say what i believe is the guiding star of my life the word the promise the prophecy the word of god i believe that is the guiding star of my life and that directs me day after day and moment after moment do you know they are saying this? I don't even want to know. I don't care about that. How do you feel now? How is your body now? I'm not, I don't live by the condition of my body. I live by the certainty of the word of God. And it is that certainty of the word of God that makes you to have faith even when other people are thinking, how can that be? And you are saying glorifying the Lord and then we are told that he did not even consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. And then in verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief he staggered not through unbelief you know what people that have unbelief are like drunkards they lose their steps they miss their steps they stagger here and there they shake here and there get this done they stagger get up they stagger stretch out your hand they stagger pick up your bed and walk they stagger because they are drunk with unbelief unbelief like wine makes them to stagger anything they hear 
nothing works. It's like, you know, I pity, you know, professors and teachers and lecturers who pack a kind of an assembly of mad men, an assembly of drunkards in their classroom. And they say, and, and they prepare very well. And when they prepare very well, they are writing this, writing this, and writing this. And the people, and the congregation, and the student, the class before him, the drunken people, they've gone to, you know, the cafe and somewhere there, and they take all these, uh, whatever it is, and they are drunkards, and then they come into the classroom staggering, and then the teacher is teaching. They get nothing. The people that have unbelief, they are like, they have drunk the wine of unbelief. And while you are talking, whatever you are talking, whatever you are saying, they are still staggering. But when you then pour out and get out of that unbelief, and you replace some belief with faith, and there is faith in your heart, and then you come, now whatever is taught in the word of God, it will sink into your heart. I said it will sink in your heart. And this, uh, this year, everything you hear will sink in your heart. You will not stagger with unbelief. Uh, you, you know, there are people that they wonder, you know, you say this, saying out this Congress is for done. D A W N, that means discipling a whole nation. And we have not even explained, they begin to stagger. And we have not even said we are going here and going here and going here and going there And that we will be a church of many nations Give me a good amen. amen But you know the people that the people who are drunk with unbelief They just begin to stagger the same How can this happen without that? How can that blessing come without this? How can we reach out here without this one? Because of unbelief, they stagger. I will not stagger. The staggering man is a drunken man. The staggering woman is a drunken woman. But the people who pour out, who reject, who turn away from all that staggering and unbelief, and they say, Lord, I believe. What do they do? Look at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Can you give glory to God? I said, can you give glory to God? If you are not worried about uh, the worrisome news you might hear from, you know, the people that are peddling and the people that are slandering and the people that are, you know, uh, have you heard? Have you seen? Do you know? Here we are, people of faith. I said people of faith. And the word of faith is in your heart. And that shield of faith is in your hand. And you're going to do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. And being fully persuaded. Being what? Being what? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a very, it's a terrible thing for you to have on your team. People who are just almost persuaded. Now to believe. Almost persuaded. Now to accept everything but the totality they don't want the total only almost almost saved but lost you see it is when you're fully persuaded and if you have a team it's wonderful to have a team a team a team together everybody accomplishes more and if everyone in that team they're fully persuaded what the leader is saying that's a place to go what the pastor is doing this is what to do and the decisions that the church is taking that this is the direction to go fully persuaded and being fully persuaded you know if you are there and you are not fully persuaded you are one leg inside and one leg outside you are one ear hearing what we're saying and you have another ear hearing what they are saying outside and your attention part of your attention is here and part of, part of your attention is to the detractors you are not fully persuaded only the people of the faith the faith to stand and they're fully persuaded they say this is the day and this is the duty and this is the responsibility and this is the direction to go i'm telling you that team may be small we will do exploits or oh, that team may be as large as we are all over here this morning and we're going to do exploits for the lord in jesus name i am fully persuaded 
that Jesus is the only way to salvation. I am fully persuaded that the word of God is sufficient without any addition or subtraction. I am fully persuaded that when we believe God, all mountains are going to move away. I am fully persuaded that even the older you get, the stronger you can be in your body. And the healthier you can be, and your eyes will not be dim. And your legs will not be weak. All the, all the arthritis and all the things as I say, you know, as you get weaker, as you get older and older, your knees will not want to bend anymore. My knees will bend. And your ankles will not want to walk anymore. I'm saying my own ankle will walk in Jesus' name. And they say, you know, when you get older, you cannot raise your hand anymore because, you know, this place is, you know, cracking. My own will not crack. And they say, when you get older, you'll not have the voice to speak. The older I get, and the clearer I'm going to speak in Jesus' name. You know, they say, you know, when we get, uh, when we get stronger, as we're told that David ran towards Goliath, you'll not be able to run anymore. I'm telling you, the older I get, the more I will run. And the faster I will run. And the more places I will run to, and you will run after me. I said, you will run after me. I must see that some of you, you are developing the kind of faith that you say, Pastor, you've been running, keep on running, but I'm going to run faster than you will run. Some of you will go ahead in Jesus' name because you are fully persuaded that whatever the word of God says, it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And then we are told that he said what God has promised, he was able also to perform. That's what we are talking about. That's the faith I come to inject into you today. The faith that will not fail. The faith that will not allow you to fall. And the faith that will make you to do exploits in the name of the Lord. Walking by in the steps of Abraham's faith. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, the call and command to Abraham's faith. The call and command to Abraham's faith. Number two, the conviction and confession of Abraham's faith. The conviction and the confession of Abraham's faith. And then number three, the commendation and the compensation. The commendation and the compensation of Abraham's faith. Number one, tell me number one. The call and the command to Abraham's faith. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 6. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, the Lord, if you're going to walk with the Lord, you have to have faith in God. If you're going to, you know, do the will of God, you have to have faith in God. If you're going to run the way of righteousness with the Lord, you have to have, you know, the faith in God. If, you know, God is talking to your faith and you are going to your reasoning, and God is talking to your faith and you are going to your body and God is talking to your faith and you are checking up with your wife and God is talking to your faith and checking up with from your husband God is talking to your faith and checking up from the members of the church those members how much of the Bible do they read you will never be able to walk by faith it's everything God is saying to your faith the call to Abraham's faith not just to Abraham to Abraham's faith and the command to Abraham's faith all the commandment that the Lord gave unto Abraham he gave to his faith he gave to his faith and the people don't understand that any command he gives us if he's not you know if you are not living in faith the first thing you say is impossible impossible when the Lord said why are you praying unto me Moses the rest is before us sir that's what I'm praying and the Egyptians are behind us that's what I'm praying said stop praying tell the people to go forward you can only say that to your faith and then are you the one walking on the water Lord if you are bid me to come come he cannot say that to your reasoning Peter knew he was a fisherman you can fish in that river and you can swim in that river and you can wash in that river but it's one thing you can never do on the river it is to walk on the water and jesus said come the lord never gives you a commandment unto your reasoning he gives you the commandment unto your faith and if you're not operating in faith you'll not be able to do it you'll not be able to get up out of that boat and walk on the river that's why it says the call and the command to abraham's faith we're looking at hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 hebrews 11 we're looking at verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him how can we please god without faith 
go unto Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. The only way you can do it is to walk by faith. Throw your rod down, it becomes a serpent, and then the Lord says, pick it up again. The only way you can pick up that serpent and it becomes a rod is to walk by faith. When thinking of drinking water, and the Lord said, Moses, you know what, take your rod in your hand, and then go to that mountain and strike the rock. It had never happened before that time. The only way you can obey that commandment is to receive the commandment by faith. And all the people were grumbling and then the serpents came in the wilderness biting all the people and then the Lord dis they came and said Moses we have sinned against you and against the Lord pray for us and he prayed for them and God said set up a, a brazen um, serpent whosoever looks on it will live the only way you can raise up that serpent there and say what the Lord is saying is look that thing never happened before the only way you can do that is by faith that you believe that the Lord is speaking not to your reasoning not to your education not to your psychology and not to have anything you learned at any university because Moses was learned in all the Egyptian teaching in their in their school and yet when he followed the lord he knew the lord never speaks to your education to your education or to your reasoning or to your mind he speaks only to your faith and if you're going to obey the lord the lord is speaking to your faith and by faith you're going to do the will of god in jesus name here they came and they said they have no they have no wine and jesus said what's between me and you woman leave me alone my hour is not yet come and then the mary went to the it says he's going to talk how do you know he's going to talk because he just said leave me alone don't talk to me my hour has not come and and she still said whatever he tells you to do do it and then jesus called the servants how did mary know that Jesus was going to do something when she had not spoken unto her about when he had not spoken to her about what he was going to do and he said go fill those paws with water they filled it with water draw it out now and go and give to the master of ceremony how can you obey such a commandment if you go to your reasoning no way that's impossible we cannot do that but God always speaks to your what to your faith that's why they drew it out and they brought to the master of ceremony and then the fellow said where did you get this beautiful wonderful wine i never tasted anything like this in my life you have preserved the best for the last moment for the last hour because the people accepted the commandment of the lord by faith that's why it says over here without faith you cannot please the lord you cannot obey the lord because he'll never speak to your reasoning he'll never speak to your mind he'll never speak to your learning he speaks only to your faith and then it says for he that comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently is seeking look at verse 8 in verse 8 by faith by faith abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed and he went out tell me the rest tell me out loud tell me unison all together not knowing whither he went he said he went he came out and went forth and i said abram where are you going i don't know if you don't know why are you going i'm going because i have faith in god he called me to go i said is that reasonable that you don't know where you are going no it's not reasonable because he didn't speak to my reasoning he spoke to my faith and the lord is speaking to your faith today and what he tells you to do you will do in jesus name uh, you see the people uh, you, you know look at the church let's say for example a few of us we have faith in god and whatever god says to do that's what we'll just rise up and do and then we have many people there and they're still saying they're still analyzing it and dissecting it and they're taking it to the laboratory and you're looking at looking at it under the mask microscope of human intelligence and say how intelligent is this and how reasonable is this and how acceptable is this and how normal is this and how traditional is this and how conventional is this and the multi they are staying there and we a few of us were saying hey come on what's the time arise and let us go for because we are well able to take the land and they're still performing the experiment and they're still looking under the microscope 
microscope, you'll never be able to get united as a church when a part of the church is walking by faith and a part of the church is walking by reasoning. You see, the people that will not move, like, you know, we say that there is the land of Canaan and the Lord is saying, get up and go out. The people that only use their head, they don't use their heart. They only use their reasoning, they don't use their faith. They'll not be able to move and they will be setting the church, the people of God back and the place we can reach in 40 days might take us 40 years to reach it and i pray that everybody will come to that level of faith even this day in jesus name because abraham walked by faith and the lord is calling us is commanding us that it is on that basis of faith alone we're going to get there we'll get there in jesus name genesis chapter 12 genesis chapter 12 let us see when the lord called him and he called him to go to a place and he said i'll tell you later i'll tell you later but then he didn't tell him at that time and he went out not knowing whither he went some people want to investigate before they go they want to survey before they go and they want to try they want to before they go they want to ask questions before they go they want to clear all their doubts and questions before they go they want to have observances before they go and the lord is saying arise i'm calling you and by faith when god called abraham he went out not knowing whither he went because he knew well if i go to my reason i'll never stand up if i go to my feeling i'll never stand up if i go to my flesh i'll never stand up if i go to my relatives i'll never get up but because i'm going to my face that's why i'm obeying the lord you are going to obey the lord in genesis chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that tell me he didn't tell him the land unto a land that i will show you i'll tell you later i want you to get up first before you know the place i want you to get on moving before you know the place just follow my direction just follow if i say come just come if i say go this way just go that way and just do what i'm asking you to do even though you don't know all the details and i will make thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and i will bless them that bless thee i will bless them that bless thee you know what the lord is telling him? he said i'm calling you to a place and you don't know the place i'm taking you through some countries and some communities i don't know them but don't worry about them and as you go the people who meet you and they bless you and they help you and they support you and they lift you up and they give you resources and sustenance to be able to get to the place all those people that help you as are walking by faith i will bless them and then it says in verse in that verse in that verse two it says i will verse 3 and curse him that cursed thee he says don't worry are there enemies there what's your problem with enemies when god is on your side the people that curse you the people that disturb you and the people that try to derail you and to stop your journey don't worry about them i will deal with them all you need to do is looking unto me the author and the finisher of your faith and as i'm directing you as i'm leading you that you are going the direction i'm telling you to do you take a step at a time a step a day at a time a day at a time lord jesus help me to take just one day one day one day at a time and that's what the lord was telling him here and he said in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed think about that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed it's like when god calls you to be a missionary and then he says go to you know this place you've never been there you don't know their language you don't know the kind of food they eat you don't know how their cities are you don't know what amenities are there you don't know whether they have good hospitals you don't know whether they have educational system you, you don't know any virtually anything and you're saying before i go to such a place i have a wife and i'm thinking about uh, you know uh, if uh, my wife gets any problem any good hospital there i don't know but i know god is there I about educational system if my if i take my children there was the educational possibilities over there i don't know but god knows and god is there and when you're able to take that step of faith and you're able to move on and you're able to say praise the lord i'm moving on and you move on by faith it says when you get there the people that help you i will bless them 
and the people that try to hinder you they get into problem i thought you'd say an amen. amen and then he says through you all the families of that nation all the communities of that nation and all the localities of that nation through you they'll be blessed in jesus name and then we're told in verse 4 so abraham departed as the lord has spoken unto him so abraham departed didn't waste time didn't try to you know loiter or linger like lord it says so abraham departed as the lord had spoken unto him look at genesis chapter 22 genesis 22 i'm reading there from verse from verse 18 genesis 22 we're looking at verse 18 and i want you to notice the word there because 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 for this reason it says in verse 18 and in thy seed and thy, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice you will obey i said you will obey and it is that obedience that will help you to have all the promises of god fulfilled in your life we're looking at nehemiah chapter 9 nehemiah chapter 9 is he talking about abram can you stop talking about abram even jesus spoke about abraham and even even paul spoke about abram and then think about all the patriarchs and all the prophets and all the preachers and all those people in the new testament everybody is talking about abraham here we are today talking about abraham and there we are tomorrow talking about you because we'll talk about your faith also we'll talk about your obedience also and we'll talk about the great and the marvelous things the lord will be doing through your life in jesus name nehemiah chapter 9 verse 7 chapter 9 verse 7 nehemiah it tells us here thou art the lord the god who did choose abraham and brought his team forth out of all of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham. You know, the people knew he was Abraham before, but when he rose up by faith and he followed the Lord, rising up by faith and following the Lord will change your name, will change your nature, will change your circumstances, will change your family, will change your children you know there are people they don't understand how changes come how abraham becomes abraham you know you know what they do they're waiting they're waiting until the change comes before they obey the lord but in the case of abraham the lord called him when it was abraham and then the lord said get up from where you are and go to this place what why did he not say but god look at my condition lay myself and this a barren woman and we go out now we're talking about a god who has called us a god who is uh, asking us to have this commitment and consecration and he said okay you are committed to the lord but where is where are children where is this and where are that? where is that and he is saying well god what am i going to do but abraham did not do that there are some people they say look at the condition of my wife if i'm going to obey the lord and follow the lord let this change first that's not going to change until you manifest faith and you obey the lord look at the condition of my children you know this child i'm so bothered about this child i want this child to be this and to be that and look at this other child and look at this other child too and their conditions have not changed and if their conditions have not changed what am i going to say other people will say you say you are following the lord yes i'm following the lord and i'll keep on following it is following by faith that will bring the change abraham will become abraham when he rises up and he follows the lord we're not looking at things around us anymore I said we're not looking at things around us anymore. Uh, but you see there are some people, uh, they, they, are, they are walking this way forward and then they're looking back. As that child changed, go on walking. As that wife changed, go on walking. As that husband changed, go on walking. Because something is going to happen. I said something is going to happen. Did I tell you last night that this uh, last year, me, I went to, you know, I went to Namibia and then I went to the north, then I went to, you know, the southern part and then there was this uh, woman. Uh, this woman was, you know, having all these challenges. I told you, you know, this problem and this problem and this problem. At a single word, all the problems of that woman, everything vanished away. Give me a good amen. amen. And then and then she wanted to come to church because she was so filled with the joy of salvation and then you know she tried to come and the husband herbalist 
the husband, which doctor? That's how they called them over there. And the husband said, where are you going? You know the work I do. If I see you step out there and... He began to persecute the woman and eventually they, you know, passed over their heart about the story and, you know, they prayed. And then you know, the pastor, you know, sent for them. And eventually the pastor preached and made an altar call. Tell me the first person to come out, the witch doctor. <laughs> and knelt down there and prayed the prayer of salvation. And then God saved. I said, God saved. Yeah. That's not me. That's the anointing on that pastor. That anointing is coming on you. Yeah. I'm telling you, it will not be me alone anymore. Me and you and you and I, the children whom God has given me. You are for signs and wonders in Jesus' name. So the, you know, our pastor there called the man after that service. And they said, I hear that, uh, you know, you are disturbing your wife. from." He said, I'm sorry. And the pastor said, you know, your wife is born again and you know, you know I, I am sorry. Everything the pastor said, I am sorry. And you know, when, a, when a witch doctor is saying, I am sorry, something has happened. <laughs> when he's bending the knee and he's saying, it was my ignorance. Now I am born again as well. And both of them now, husband and wife, born again, converted, transformed. They are now members of that church. I'm saying that this year, through you, I'll be hearing stories from you. And when you come, when you come next year, tell me your story. I will tell everybody your story. I will carry your story everywhere because now you are the man of faith. Now you are the woman of faith. And something is going to happen to you and through you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. And thou foundest in his son. He sat faithful before thee. And made us a covenant with him. To give the land of the Canaanites. And the Hittites. And the Amorites. And the Perizzites. And the Jebusites. And the Gagashai. To give. To give. I say. Uh, to the uh, uh, seed. And has performed thy words. For thou art righteous the word of the lord will perform in your life in jesus name point number two now the conviction and the confession of abraham's faith conviction and confession of abraham's faith we're looking at hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading to you here from verse 17 hebrews chapter 11 we're reading from verse 17 the confession, the conviction of Abraham's faith. Hebrews 11 verse 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able. That God was able. And I'm saying in your life, God is able. I don't care about the condition. I say God is able. I'm not worried about the past. I said God is able. I don't know what your people are telling you. But I'm saying God is able. I don't know the mountain or the valley that you're having as a challenge now. But we're saying, tell me out loud. As you look inside, as you look around, as you look at your family, as you look at the church, and you look at all the things that surround you, and you say, are we going to be able to make progress? Are we going to be able to grow? And look at what is happening. I hear, I hear all the news like you are hearing. What's happening in the north, and what's happening in the east, and what's happening in the south, south, and what's happening in the west, and what's happening in everywhere. And I'm saying, God is able don't base your life on what you read in the papers. Come to the Bible and let the Bible be greater than the newspaper. Don't base your life and your decisions. And whether you move or you don't move or sit or stand up, don't base that on what you hear. News coming from here, news coming from there. Because we're saying, tell me out loud. Our God is able. I said our God is able. I said our God is able and that God is your father he will not leave you you will not sink in the river you will not be drowned in the river all the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus name 
accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure let me show you the story we're looking at Genesis chapter 22 Genesis chapter 22 and you're going to see why it says it was by faith he did that nobody 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 could have done this except by faith in God there are things challenges that will come to you the only way you'll be able to obey is by faith and thank God you have that faith now and you know the people that don't have any faith there'll be no good record concerning them but it's the people that have faith we're reading about and it's because they walk by faith and live by faith that's why we have all this record concerning them God will write a good record concerning you we're looking at Genesis chapter 22 I'm reading from verse from I'm reading from verse 1 it came to pass after these things that God did test examined Tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Uh, you need to understand the word of God. Uh, God did not, uh, what did God call his name? Tell me, what name was he having before? Abraham. If God has said Abraham, he'll be wondering what's going to happen. But God said, What did God say? And what's the meaning of Abraham? father of many nations now he had only one child and god said father of many nations and he said here am i and god was going to say this child your love your beloved this child your only child go sacrifice him to me and he's saying oh but god has not changed god said i'm father of many nations god said abraham Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I, I am the father of many nations. And God is saying, Take this child, the child that is the seed, the child that is the child that will bring another child, and their children will bring another child, and their children will bring another child, the child that is the very nucleus and the focus and the very foundation and the pivot of the many nations. The Lord said, Go sacrifice him to me. He said, I know what. God is trying to do something here. He's going to do some multiplication in a supernatural way. He's not talking to my reasoning. He's talking to my faith because he's still calling me Abraham. Whatever he says, after he called me Abraham, I'm going to do. Because I am still the father of many nations. Whenever God calls you, remember the name is calling you. And whenever God speaks to you, remember on what platform, at what stage the Lord is talking to you and he said take now thy son thine only son Isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of and Abraham did what when did he rise up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he clave the wood for burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him now God told him the place where to go but he didn't tell him Abraham testing 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 Abraham, I'm testing you now. Don't worry about it. Oh, come on, fine. Testing, testing, testing. Take your only son, your son whom you love, and go and sacrifice him to me upon a mountain. I will show you. Testing, testing, testing. This is not real. This is not real. This is just testing. We're just testing the, you know, how your faith is. Nothing bad is going to come. God did not tell him it was a test. God did not tell him, don't worry about it. I'm going to do it this way and do it this way. He thought it was for real. But he knew that God is able to raise him from the dead. And so he took, he took that Isaac. And then we're told, and then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with the ass. There are some things your eyes will not see. 
uh, servants you abide here there is a level of commitment i cannot allow my servants to see there's a level of dedication to the lord i cannot allow you young men to see there's a level of obedience to the lord that i cannot come and be explaining to you you know some people uh, they want to explain everything god is saying and all the steps they are taking and all the decisions they are making to everybody to the children church and to the youth so church and then to you know all the women in the church and all the men in the church so that everybody will understand by the time you finish explaining they're going to start crying and then they're going to say i see what a pity a kind of father like this is going to take you is going to slaughter you and he's going to make you a month offering that's why abram abram did not even tell sarah sarah what do you think of this good idea i'm going to take our only son and i'm going to sacrifice him to the lord and uh, sarah you know don't, why don't bother a you know woman like that to tell her everything that the lord has told you to do and then why do you bother these servants that you servant you sit down here you will not understand this one you cry your heart out if you saw me doing what the lord wants me to do because they were not on the same level of faith not on the same level of faith that's why he didn't tell them all those details and and, and you know that's the problem people have they want to explain everything expansiate everything so that everybody will understand not there's nothing that everybody will understand you know jesus was telling his own disciple he said the son of man is going to die and then on the third day it will rise again and who spoke peter what did he say did he say good enough master wonderful what a great revelation did he say that they want to understand they want to under they want to understand he held him and said master lord that will never happen to you and then jesus get the behind me satan you know the people you tell like and, and some people was others don't understand and once they don't agree then they call back and they draw back and say oh, i'm sorry i didn't know that that thing will not go well down with everybody and since everybody will not understand i cannot do that again you will do it i said they will do it and it is because of all the families and all the communities of that nation and of this our nation will be blessed in jesus name i'm saying that you are the one god will use every local government in this country deeper life is going to be there every village in this country deeper life is going to be there every community when you go to a large a large city you're going to uh, once you are here you walk a few if just a few steps and another deeper life you walk another a little pulse there another deeper another another deeper life everywhere because all the people who are here the power of god is coming upon your life and you know people they'll say but where are the resources don't worry about that the resources are there already by the time you get there you'll find the houses there you'll find the land there you'll find all the resources there in jesus name and so uh, servants you stay here i and this lad will go yonder and will worship verse five latter part of verse five tell me the rest and come again to you the conviction of faith and the confession of faith we're going we're coming back you are going to all your places and none of you will die before your time yeah. next year if jesus tarries you are coming back here yeah. whatever water may pass under the bridge you are coming back here yeah. whatever challenges may happen around you you are coming back over here and you're going to tell the story of your success and of your moving forward in jesus name yeah. And then we're told in verse 6 And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering And laid it upon Isaac his son And, and he took the fire in his hand And a knife And they went both of them together And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father And said my father And he said here am I My son And he said, and he said behold the fire And behold the wood Where is the lamb for a born sacrifice there are some things you cannot tell your children you know there are some people they say you know i love my children to the point that any decision i'm going to, that's my commitment in my family 
And any decision I'm going to take, I have to tell all my children, no matter how young they are. That's how I've lived with them since they were born. I call them in a quiet time. After our quiet time, and you know, we read the Bible, then I'll say, Children, don't go yet before you go to school. Daddy is going to take a new job, and then he wants to do this and do this and do that because it's my commitment in my family. Anything I'm going to do, I must tell my children. And then, you know, one of the children say, Daddy, you mean that you are going to that other place to walk? How about the place you have been walking? And then I will explain until they all understand. You know, the son, he asked Abraham, he said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. Here is the wood, here is a knife, here is a fire. What is the sacrifice? And what if you open his mouth at that time and said, Where is that? You are the sacrifice. <laughs> what will happen and it was still they were still very near those servants the servants were still there and they were still looking at them just as they were going and then Isaac would look back and say servants come out here come out here that thing will never happen i'm telling you that you need to read your bible again read your bible again many people it's only what they knew five years ago that's why they're still standing on now it's only what they knew 10 years ago that's the only thing they see carrying i'm saying that when you come back to this bible and read it again god will give you wisdom consider what i say and god will give you understanding in all matters look at now the conviction of faith and the confession of faith verse 8 abraham said my son god will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering don't worry about that let your children know that you are walking by faith there's no lamb and i know how you normally sacrifice a lamb where is the lamb God will provide himself a lamb for the bond offering. So they went both of them together and they came to the place which God had said unto him, I uh, told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and he bound, tell me, Isaac his son and he laid him on the altar upon the wood and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven ah, heaven was watching every step heaven was watching every decision heaven was watching every move and at the right time Abraham did not see the angel when they were coming on the way. Abraham did not look at heaven and see all the, you know, all the bright light shining and beaming and say, Abraham, well done, well done, well done. You're going to make it. Abraham did not see anything because he only walked not by sight, he walked by faith. At that very point, the angel spoke from heaven and he said unto Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I, I'm always here. Here am I, I'm always here. You're always be there i said you'll always be there and you will do great things for the lord in jesus name and he said lay not thy hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him for now i know for now i know for now i know that thou fearest god seeing that was not withheld thy son then only son from me and abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold behind him behind him behind him did you know that that provision was behind you but you didn't see but you see spoke by faith behind in ram caught in the ticket that the lord kept that ram there the lord has all the rams and all the goats and all the sheep on the hills the lord has all the lambs everywhere he knows what to sacrifice and he was already preserving sacrifice there he doesn't need your child he doesn't need isaac this is just testing you and that when you go as the lord has told you you'll find a miracle will follow you right there it's, it was behind them and then he looked behind and then he, and he went and he took the ram and offered him all for a burnt offering instead of his son and abraham called the name of the place jehovah jerry god will provide as it is said to this day in the mountain of the lord it shall be seen and you another person will sit in your life point number three now the commendation and the compensation the commendation and the compensation of abraham's faith the lord will compensate you 
the Lord will reward you. And the Lord will do great mighty things in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 15. And the angel of the Lord said unto Abraham, Out of heaven the second time, the Lord will speak to you the second time. And you know, there are some people, they only hear the voice of, they have heard the voice of the once in their lives. They say, 19 such and so, 2000 such and such, the Lord spoke to me this way. I'm asking, has he spoken to you the second time? Has he spoken to you again? Or are you just only, you're only living on the strength of the food you ate five years ago. You're only living on the conviction that you had, the decision you made 10 years ago, when last has God spoken to you the second time. That's why we're here at this Congress for the Lord to speak to us again. And the Lord will speak to you again in Jesus' name. You know, it's so easy when you are walking by faith. There's no sweating. There's no struggling. Just take a step and a step and a step. And the Lord is showing you what to do. And then as you go like this, life becomes easy. All the mountains are leveled. All the hills are leveled. And then you are just walking on plain ground because you are walking by faith. And the Lord said, the angel of the Lord called Abraham unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this sin. And has not withheld thy son, then only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. Can I tell you something? As you look at Abraham from chapter 12, all through to chapter 21. Chapter 12, all through to chapter 21. And there are some things so far, you see. Why did Abraham do this? Why did Abraham do this? Why did Abraham do this? But I want to tell you something. After this chapter, everything Abraham had done as a mistake even as a sin or even as something that god said this is wrong how can this be god just forgot this one single thing that he did that because you have obeyed my voice in this one single thing i'll never refer to anything of the past that you have done wrong the lord just said he then brought him near he said i've never called any human being my friend i call them creatures because i created them from now you are my friend god talking to abraham because you've done this everything i know what you said in egypt when you told sarah what to say i know what you said in gera when you told him to told her to say this and this because of abimelech i forget everything i know what you did with hagar i forget all that because of this one single step you have taken the past is forgotten you know if you just come to the lord and say lord i'm just going to rise up now in the in the in the arms of faith and i'm going to just do your will and go the direction you want me to go not minding the cause everything wrong in the past god will forget everything in the past that god was saying how about this and how about this and how about this the one single step of this sublime faith of this unique faith that he took God just said everything is forgotten. He said, Because you have done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And then he says, And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. You know what we do can be a blessing upon our children. What we do, what we do can become a great, great open door even for all our members. And that's the reason why fathers are very important and mothers are very essential because what those fathers and mothers do can actually bring great blessings upon their children from generation to generation. And in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And God is telling you the same thing. Through your ministry, the nations of the world will be blessed through your ministry everything the people you touch and the people you come across they'll be blessed in jesus name and then he said because thou hast obeyed my voice now there are some things that you know some people that's why they stop but i'm not going to stop there i'm going to read verse 19 so abraham what unto who that's what he told them that's what he told them that's what he said i 
say here i and this lad will go up yonder and worship and we will come back again unto you and he went and he worshiped the lord and he wanted to sacrifice the child and the lord said stay your hand and then god provided a ram and the ram was sacrificed and the lad came up and i and the lad and abraham and the lad they came back to the young men you'll go back full no blessing that you brought here will be taken away from you the fullness of the blessings of god they are following you in this year in jesus name just walk by faith and through you i say through you i say through you and through you every one of you the nations of the world and all the communities of the world will be blessed in jesus name you accept that i said you accept that rise up and tell the lord i accept he's talking to your faith he's talking to your faith he's talking to your faith he calls you by faith he commands you by faith and you have to manifest the conviction of faith and the confession of faith and then the compensation and the commendation of faith will come upon your life in jesus open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer and say oh lord here am i oh lord here am i oh lord here am i you're spoken to my faith you're spoken to my faith don't go back to your reasoning don't go back to your reasoning don't go back to your reasoning stand in faith accept it in faith believe it by wavering in faith it's the people that don't have faith that stagger they stagger like drunkards but you are not staggering you are not staggering you are not staggering you are believing and therefore you're walking consistently according to the words of the lord let your conviction be a conviction of faith and let your confession be a confession of faith and then the commendation and then the compensation of faith you'll see the reward in your life pray open your mouth open your mouth open your mouth and talk to the lord there's victory waiting for everyone and when the lord calls you to go and evangelize to go out and reach out and touch many lives arise and do it do it by faith and you are going to find the lord will glorify himself 